They know when you are doing, they can identify you, they can see when you are back doing the next search. They now have your addresses, the addresses of your friends from all your Android uh, address books. And that means they can trace you, they know you. And there is of course a danger of censoring, popping, spanking. You don't know exactly what's there in the web because if it's, if it's there and if it's not shown, it actually doesn't exist. So, uh, and they also own your data. You believe that the data is on your server and therefore your server, you own your data because it's on your server. But there is an access path, access path to your data which consists of a search index. And the search index is a, a huge amount of data which is hosted on the search service server. And therefore, a centralized search portal is in fact um, a cloud service. Search portals are cloud services, and cloud services are all about owning data and um, making a business out of it. So that's something what we don't want. What we want is um, a technology which, ha which has an open access path. To explain this, we look at free data. You know, free data consists of uh, free content, free software, data under Creative Commons license, and if you, as the user, want to access free data, you need a search service. And if the search service is a proprietary service, then actually the data, the free data, is not free because it can only be truly free if it can be accessed with the free search software. Otherwise, it's always in danger that it is blocked or it's not visible. So, um, what another effect that's happening is that uh, ordering takes away some part of what is visible. And uh, this is all about relevancy and ranking. If I would ask you what is relevant for you, and don't think in technical t terms, just about um, like a society, in a society where special things are important. This is your ranking. And uh, this is your relevance. And the ranking is the technical instance of uh, the relevance. It applies a rule on, on the order and therefore, in a special community, there is a relevancy and there should be a special ranking for that relevancy. And uh, ranking influences the standard and opinions of a community. And this is a, uh, a question how a, a culture can, can evolve. The, the culture of a community is influenced by the information and the knowledge that exists. And therefore, a search engine can uh, influence a culture. Yeah, it has a cultural impact on communities. That means we need, we need a, search, a search engine technology that is in your hand, and that means it's, it's a software that you start and that you operate. What would it mean? Your own search engine means independence, privacy, freedom. It's an independence from centralized search portals. It means privacy because nobody else can trace you. If you are doing the search on your machine, you are the operator, you can, you can trace yourself, but nobody else. And freedom of information because you don't have any access limits, there's no censoring, no filtering, and no observation, no content spamming. So what do you need if you really want to do this yourself? There's a whole amount of technology and it's mostly unknown how these things work. So what is a homebrew search engine? I will give some examples. Uh, uh, for our use cases and what you can do if you have uh, your own search engine. I will explain something, um, how it works, so the knowledge, that's the knowledge you get and, and I will do a demonstration of an installation of your own search engine so you can do this yourself. Um, these software models that I show must be easy and must be done only in some minutes because otherwise it wouldn't be available for everyone. That's one requirement. Knowledge must be available for everyone. Therefore, it must be easy, available. That means it must be a free software. And it's nice to have it hackable. That means there should be APIs so you can hack on the software itself and make something new out of it. Um, one question would be, uh, OK, I do, I do my own search engine. What is better than, than a centralized search portal you could have. So what, what can I have, what can I get out of it? One example is it's a community search portal. If you are in a community with your own standards, 
then you can apply these standards and share new, your knowledge and there's no barrier around from another search engine. Search for search engine portal in the web where you can just search for media files like uh, audio files. You search and say, please give me a list of 50 audio files and then give me a download button to get them all at once. There is no search engine which can do this. Uh, there may be political reasons that this is not possible, but if you do your own search engine, you can do this yourself. Data protection. This is for uh, content in danger, I may say. Um, there is some content where it, there is a question if there should be a search engine for this at all. If it's allowed, is it against the law or not? This is out of a question if you do this yourself. You put this data, which could be endangered, into your own uh, search engine. A topic-oriented news feeds. This is effectively like your own intelligent service. You can have something like agents working for you. You have your own selection criteria to get news and news feed that you made yourself out of selected agents. And, of course, you can share your search index. That means don't work alone with your own search engine connected with others who are doing the same thing. This is a, search, uh, a shared search index. And, of course, the sixth point is share your search experience. If you are searching, maybe you want to share what you are doing and your ranking criteria might be applicable for someone else as well. So this is the social search. Now let's see how do a web search engine work. Before you start to make your own search engine, you must know how it works. So most of you see only this web interface. There is that search slot where you put in a word and then something magical magically happens. This is of course provided by a search server. There's a server providing the service. But what's inside? Inside is a search index. The search index consists of a database which has another, a different st structure than only the files which are stored. This is in a document cache and the search index is uh, defined by a schema which means there's a structure of fields which uh, is um, a, a, a structure what kind of elements to show, like the date, the file name, uh, subject, title, and so on. A ranking that's applied and facets. Facets is a, um, a method to drill down the search result to a specific subset, uh, which is um, constructed by some criteria you choose. Uh, this is difficult to, to explain because there's no example from, from a Google search you can cannot drill down by, uh, by specif specific uh, things. Uh, this, is, this is so much to explain for another talk, so I <laughs> leave it out here. So to obtain such a search index, you need to get the data inside of the search engine. And that means you need a no module which grabs the data from the web, which loads it from the web, and that's the crawler. The crawler had, has some network interfaces and then the data which is acquired by the crawler is passed. That means the clear text is extracted from the document. If you, if you take a PDF file from the web and you look into the binary format, you don't see text. You need a parser to do this. So the crawler has some more details. It must ob obey to the robots protocol. It has a balancer to go nicely over different domains. Uh, it must organize itself. Network interfaces, you know from, from a Google search, you know only HTTP interface, but there are some more protocols like FTP search. There's no FTP search, which is uh, nicely available. There are some, some strange portals with restricted content, but the large, the large search portals, don't, they ignore FTP content. And this is a whole galaxy of documents and information out there on these servers. So it's nice to have these interfaces, and of course you need a lot of parsers. And the next part, uh, this is, um, this is uh, data is walking this path through the crawler, network interfaces, to the parsers, into, into the document cache, and then it's doing an indexing. And that produces the search result you get if you search. You need some administration and API for different formats. That's the hackable part you want to have to, to get the data out of it. Open search is, is, is like an RSS format. You need some monitoring to see what's going on in the machine. Uh, how long it takes, and you need some steering interface, like if, if you want to take data into your own index every hour or every week, 
you have to have a, a steering interface to do this. So if you, if you want to have this all, this is, this is a, um, a search appliance, uh, a big thing. You can buy this for a lot of money, but we want to build this um, ourselves. So what components can be used? For the search index, there's uh, Apache Solar. Uh, it's a well-known uh, indexing engine. And for the network interfaces and the parsers, there's a lot of Apache projects which provide enough material. But all the other parts which are here, which make it nice and clickable, your own search engine as a, as a clickable engine, that's a, a part of the YASI project. The YASI search server is a, is a search appliance combining all these things. Uh, Mostly homebrew and then uh, the solar search index and all these network interfaces and passes from the uh, Apache project. So, if you combine this, we have something which is easy. It's a free mill installation. It's available uh, because all parts are free software and it's hackable because it has a lot of APIs. Um, the Apache solar project is um, the raw engine. And I want to show this in the demonstration now. If you want to do an installation, you will do this. And because this is not very nice to see, uh, I will do this now on my machine and will only take uh, two or three minutes. Can you please, can you please make on the, the mi other microphone? Hello? No, this is not working. I need no. No, no, microphone is working. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Now it's working. That's good. So this is the the Apache Solar package which you can download, and there's a very nicely done example file directly inside. What it's doing now, it is starting a web server, and the web server is hosting the, the search index of Solar. And if I want to see the, the web uh, interface of this, I go to the uh, local, local address. This is, if, you, if you look at the address line, this is in the, at the local host. It's running on my machine here now. And this is the, the machine's interface. It has a um, strange looking uh, query interface here. If I do a search, I get a search result which is empty and consists only of an XML format. So this is the, the core of a search engine and if I want to fill it with data, this is like a, a hello world for search engines. Uh, there's one uh, opportunity to do it like this. This is a, a curl command. That means it's a command line web client talking to this server address here and putting some data uh, formulated, formulated as a JSON string. It says add a, a document with the ID named data1 and the title hello world. So this is now placed into the search engine and if I search again, I have the document inside the search engine. So this is the quick start, quick start for a search engine core. But this is not a very, very practical thing to do. You want to have it easier, therefore you need an, an environment to put a lot of data inside very quickly and easily. So we move on to the next uh, opportunity. This is the YASI search engine. Uh, it can be also be started on command line, but there are also other um, uh, packages available for Debian and for Macintosh, and that's what I will use now. Let's, let's stop the, the solar in between. <laughs> and what's happening now is, again, there is a web server starting, hosting the YASI search engine core. And now you have uh, what you expected from a search engine. This is a search slot. And the uh, uh, question is, how do we get data into it? Uh, you can put data into it into, uh, if you use the a crawl start. 
saying, I want to put in here an address of a web page where all the data from that web page should be taken in. So what, what kind of web page could I take? I take the home page of this event, copy it inside here. Then it's verified that it's allowed to take the data. Uh, there's a robots.txt file explaining that it's allowed and I can start a search now, uh, a crawl now, not a search. And it's taking data inside. I can do this uh, again with uh, the Free Software Foundation homepage, for example. And this is now a crawl running. And it, show, it shows me here that these pages are loaded from the web. All the web pages are loaded in the local cache, uh, stored there, indexed in this cache. And if I want, I can do a search now. Let's see if there's any freedom <laughs> in these pages. Should be. <laughs> so. Very quickly, you made your own search engine containing only content from two sources, uh, from the web pages of this event and from the web pages from the Free Software Foundation. And you can go on and on and put more data like this into it. So this is, um, that's, that this case, your own search portal for projects and communities. Let's consider you are a free software uh, community and say these are important pages. And mostly all the, uh, the projects have uh, uh, their web pages hosted from the content management system. They have a forum, they have a wiki, and all these pages are, um, are project related and you want to have the, uh, a, your own project search for that. And that's your community, your project. and. Um, Maybe you know from forum discussions if someone posts a question and then someone asks, an answers, uh, that's in the wiki, why didn't you look in the wiki? Uh, maybe people did a forum search, search in, uh, uh, in advance. So if you have a large project with a lot of different project sites, you never know where information is. And if you c combine all this data into one, into one uh, search engine, then uh, it's easy to add more services to your project. and. Every time you add more services, you know exactly that people uh, will find it, even if they don't know that there's a new service. So this is a, um, an application uh, which is actually a big business. You can sell servers for this. And uh, for example, there's a product from Google, the so-called Google Search Appliance, uh, which is uh, sold, uh, rented 20,000 times. And it's a really expensive product. So you can do something like this yourself with free software as well. And people should know that this is possible to do this with free software and you don't need to, uh, to buy such uh, things because always people uh, think it's very dif difficult to do this. This is not difficult, it's easy like I shown, I've shown now. So you get from all these different projects your own search window and uh, you can also put in an FTP, pa FTP site. I'm almost out of time. Let's say um, I have an... FTP server with videos. You can you can put in these uh, videos from Chaos Communication Congress yeah. as well. And then you get search results from, from FTP servers as well. Let's let's move on quickly. <laughs> the next uh, that's the next use case. Put in search, uh, put in uh, web pages for an uh, FTP search. This is this is the case where, uh, which you don't have anywhere in the web. You can you cannot search search very good for FTP. And uh, one thing nobody has is a download button. If you if you want to have an, uh, a search result consisting only of uh, media files, then the next wish you could have is to download all these media files at once. So let's try this. There's a special uh, file search option here, and uh, I can search for example media. Let's see what's what's the else. 
three. Yeah, there I see only f two MP4 files. Let's uh, drill down to these MP4 files. Now it's four. These are the files from the FTP server. And now there's a question: How do you get a, a download button from the web? There's no, there's no real um, possibility to do this. You cannot do a JavaScript storing the data on your disk. This is like a like a hack. You can create a download script, push this button, and you get get these curl commands. You just copy paste them to your terminal, and it will download all the file all these files using the the curl commands. Uh, I don't know if ev everybody of you understands how this works. So, if you know what a Linux shell is, a Linux shell. And if you know what, uh, what the curl command does, then you have an imagination that you can download uh, hundreds of files using this, this trick um, very easily. Because there's no other opportunity to get a download button into a web browser. You must, you must do something like this. The next, the next thing is uh, endangered data. You can Im imagine that there's a lot of data, for example, at the Pirate Bay. So uh, how do we get all the torrent files from the Pirate Bay and put it into your own search engine? That would be a great fun, wouldn't be? So uh, let's have a look. Uh, if you know how, how um, a search engine works and how um, websites are constructed, this, is, this can be a lot of, lot of fun. So this is the, the robots.txt file from the Pirate Bay. And it has one line saying sitemap. And this sitemap addresses millions of torrent files which they host. So they actually want that you do this, exactly this. They provide an information how to get them all. So uh, let's do it. Oops, sorry. Uh, after you put in an address like this, you get uh, the sitemap URL sitting here. And if you do the start now, it would take this sitemap URL and would load millions of web pages, which I don't want to do here in this demonstration, because this would be too much for my old computer. <laughs> so, but uh, you see, this this uh, option exists, and you can you can do this yourself very easily. So the next the next thing is creating your own intelligent service. What is an intelligent service? It's like having agents working for you and then selecting by some intelligent method those things where you are interested in. So how, how does, does this apply to the web and to search engine technology? There's a simple way to have agents working for you and these are RSS feeds. Uh, news feeds you can address and uh, let's have a look at one. For example, this is, this is the Twitter feed from a search for this project. You see this, this address? If you do a Twitter search like this, you get an uh, Atom stream. This is an R RSS stream. And you can put in such a uh, stream into, into a search engine, which has an RSS feed importer. Put in just this address. Then you see all the tweets which had been, had been, had been done in the last minutes, and you, you can say uh, add them all to the index, but you can also say do this as a scheduler every seven or say five minutes. And then the scheduler goes there and takes all the tweets in the index. Let's do it. They are now enqueued, they are now indexed partly, and then you can, uh, you can search for them. Now, now you get a search result, which is ordered by date. That means you get the most recent thing from uh, Campus Party Europe now. But you can uh, put in other words here, like freedom. And then you get only the tweets. If this would be the search engine containing, on, containing only the tweets, which are about freedom in that specific area where you have an agent taking information from. So this consists 
of more information because we are crawling the web now. But yeah, you can uh, discover easily more RSS feeds like this is the uh, fellowship, fellowship news feeds from uh, Fre Free Software Foundation. And you can just put in all these in the, in the search. Now let's make another news feed out of this. And that's easy. Just replace the HTML by RSS. And then you get the search result as an, another RSS feed. You have an RSS feed constructed out of a search result from, R, from an RSS feed um, uh, crawler. So this is, this is like your personal intelligent service. Constructing news feed out of search results from your interest areas. <laughs> I hope you get the point. This is a nice thing to have. <laughs> So, you, if you look for uh, a Twitter message about this event, you get a slide. So, you can have all these texts and uh, do all these things yourself because you, it's all explained here. And the next thing to do is share your search index. If you have your own search engine, it would be nice to share the index you created. So, other people can also take the index and that it's, it's done also in, in YASI because it has a built-in peer-to-peer protocol. The peer-to-peer -peer protocol makes it possible to share the index. And uh, let's see how this works. What we actually want to do is to build a large-scale search engine which is able to store billions of documents uh, in an efficient way. So how do you start? You start with a simple a single search engine and then scale it up with for more documents horizontally it's called horizontal scaling and with more performance vertically and it creates a so, a so called search engine cluster such that's the construction that a large scale search engine operator has in his data center what we want to have is to have all this data to take it out of this data center and distribute it distribute it to your home so we have it in your home, and now we need to connect them. And that's what uh, Yassi PS can do in an efficient way using a data structure which is appro appro appropriate for that. It's called a distributed hash table. A distributed hash table looks uh, like, in this case, like this, because we apply orderings of words and orderings of peers, and we distribute uh, the result of web crawls, you have seen that we made a web crawl, and the result of that is distributed then to peers. One peer starts and distributes it to other peers, other peers search, and get it then into a search result. So this, this network exists. It's in every of these search peers, and uh, that's what all the time was running here, actually. So this is, uh, this is part of the search network. You see the network graphics here. The name of the peers having this uh, uh, are also running a, a web crawl. Um, with these waves here, you see that uh, such a peer is doing a, a web crawl. Uh, with the sparks, you can see that there's a heavy search is doing there. And uh, the red dot, that's our peer here. That's this computer. It's the whole service is running on this computer and the green lines is showing that all the data that I acquired here from uh, project pages, from RSS feeds, feeds is, is distributed, distributed to other peers. peers. These, these green, green lines show that, that these peers, peers now receive data we created here at this desk. desk. So, so in, in this, this distributed, distributed environment, environment and uh, who received the data? data? And, and it's, it's not, not possible, possible to have, have a central point because, because you see from the construction of the network, of the network there's, there's no, no central point to access uh, somewhere to do a censoring. This is an uncensorable search network, so we can we can uh, we can search for anything. Uh, oh, nice suggestions. <laughs> Let's search for Weltverbesserer. So, um, oh, it shows me a Google every page. Um, these results come from the distributed web uh, network and um, that's the point of sharing your search index. And the last point of my examples is 
six as a shared search experience. If you have a distributed search index, you have a shared index. If you have a distributed um, search experience, you have a social search. And social search is an interesting point. In the next talk, uh, Pablo sitting there, he will talk uh, in depth about SIX. So I don't want to give you more about this. He will talk about all, all of this. Um, this is again an installation inst instruction so you can reproduce this yourself. I don't do this here. Uh, Pablo will, will do. So this is to sum up uh, the APIs I have. How much time is left? <laughs> time left? Uh, we, have, um, we have an SRU interface to do the queries. This is a standard for the properties of the query. We have an uh, open search standard for the search results. That's a connection which is used by SIX, for example, to, to get all the search results by a standard. And uh, we have an, uh, an, an interface to put in your own data. You create a f a f an XM file, XML file like this and you can hand it over to Yassi very easily. So you can index your own data as well. Uh, these are some snippets you can put in your web pages. So, oops. If you want to have your, the search window inside your own web pages, then you need some, some code you put in, and you just cut out this code and change the address. This is the, this is the address of the, the search peer you are using. That's from your server, then the address. And then you have on your, home, your own home page your, um, your own search service you, should, you, could, you can provide for everyone. You're, so you have a search portal. Um, this, this is again a format to import data. I don't want to explain this uh, in detail because it's a very technical thing. You can read about it. So let's sum up. Access to knowledge and the right to privacy is a human right. And we need tools that you get actually this right in your own hands, then that you get this right. So we demonstrated such use cases that uh, you haven't seen before, which are useful for you and which, which could be a good reason that you create your own search. We explained how search technology works in general, so you know uh, that there is more than just this, this, this uh, search slot and, and uh, it's not a mystery how it works. You can recreate this yourself. Uh, we dem demonstrated free tools which are easily uh, applicable. If, if, um, free content should be available for everyone, then it means it must be easy for everyone. And these tools are easy for everyone. And I would like to ask you for help that you try this out, find your ideas, um, hack on the interface, and um, please, please contact then one of these uh, projects to, to get questions or to present your own thing you made out of these things. So that's the talk. Thank you for listening. I think we have some minutes left for questions. Is this? Hello? Yeah. Hello? Uh, I want to ask about this uh, decentralized search that you showed. Uh, is it... Uh, hello? So, when you do decentralized search with multiple shared indexes, uh, how you guarantee the relevance of uh, indexes uh, from some source, uh, which is uh, like... Uh, some, I, I mean, some could just poison the index uh, with some irrelevant information. Uh, it, you mean uh, some, some information can be poisoned? Uh, that's, that's, that's the question that uh, search engine operators are starting to do censoring. There is actually no poisoned content if the content you, are searched, uh, you searched is actually on the page. So if you don't want to see this page, you need to have some drill down mechanisms to sort it out because it's not part of your interest. And that's part of the ranking uh, mechanism. So you must, uh, you can apply filter and uh, a search is always correct if the word you searched on is actually on the word, uh, on the page. And that's verified. Each uh, search result is, which is presented in this search is loaded before it is shown. Because you didn't have the document before you can't present a snippet. The snippet is the the point where your word hit into the document, and that's 
you must load so you can verify the, the result and therefore it's not, it's not a spam result if it's shown. <laughs> it may be out of your interest, but uh, it's, it's always a correct result. I mean, uh, some, for example, some uh, company can just uh, like make up the words uh, to get the users to their site. So if, if you want to uh, organize your own index, then you can uh, switch off the peer-to-peer -peer functionality. So only the data is inside which you want to have in. Uh, sorry, I missed the beginning of your talk, but the question is, would it be possible to use it as a, like an in-house search engine? Yes, an uh, internet search is uh, easily possible. Just no, uh, in-house, like I just use it as a, mm, f um, for instance, uh, in, in an archiving system, there's like metadata. Yes, and yes it's a, it, your in-house solution is like, a, it's like an internet solution just in-house. We call it internet solution because it's a restriction on addresses also. which are on, uh, on, on your local network. But you can also put in files. You can put in files from SMB servers, from FTP servers. Um, so from, from servers you have uh, under your desk, yes. Excellent, thanks. One more question. Uh, uh, is it possible to use this YASI for uh, protected indexing protected resources which are protected by passwords, uh, forms, HTML forms, authentication? So, for example, use it to uh, index Jira tickets? Uh? No, there is no authentication uh, mechanism inside, so it's not possible to have protected contact inside. Okay. Any, any plans for that? No, yeah, uh, difficult. First of all, very interesting. Um, I wonder about the quality of the SERPs. Um, are, you st are you still using other uh, conventional search engines because you cannot find stuff on your own one, or can you completely, or were you able to completely move um, away to uh, to Jazzy? <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, I use uh, that's that's a general um, question. If if you just restrict yourself on one single search engine or if you want to look uh, on, on several sites. So I, I use several search engines. They are also uh, topic-oriented search engines. Uh, you need to use uh, a Twitter search if you want to have a Twitter result. Uh, Google is a great service if, uh, because it, it's uh, organizing the web very well and they have millions of servers. You can't compete with millions of servers that easily. So the, the quality is nice. If you try a Yassi search, you, I believe you will be surprised. The results are different, but they are interesting. Maybe because it would be results not presented by Google, but still interesting things. And that's what we want to discover. We want to be free to see what other people placed into the index. So what you see in a Yassi search is placed by other people into the index, and not by an, uh, uh, the general attempt to have in everything. Of course, that could be an, a target, but at this time, it's focused on things people put inside. So it, it's very diffi uh, different, and it's therefore not usable only as a single point of uh, a single search engine you need. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, can I use um, custom ranking mechanism uh, for my personal search results? Yes. Uh, like something more complex uh, as we a date sort. A, a ranking, ranking is an interesting uh, thing because it's, uh, it's, there are a lot of, of secrets and rumors around how it works. So we, we, we have a kind of, uh, of switchboard, a kind of switchboard to test to test things, like uh, ranking in such a way that uh, short URLs are more important than long URLs, or vice versa. If you are searching in, in, an, internet, in an internet solution, then definitely the long URLs sh should be more interesting than the, sh the short ones, because they get more in-depth information. But if you're more on... More specialized. Yeah, more specialized. If you're searching, if you're searching in the web, uh, it's... Uh, it's the other way because if you're, if you're looking for, for example, say Microsoft and you put in Microsoft, you don't want to have a long URL. You, what you expect is Microsoft.com. So I could, all the brand names, it's, it applies to all these brand names. 
people put in just one word and they get a homepage and not a very long URL with a PDF describing some business of that company. So this is one example how uh, a ranking can be appropriate uh, in the one way and the opposite of that op operate ranking in an internet solution would be more appropriate. So we have more uh, things of that like um, number of words which appear in a document. Is that interesting? Uh, does it appear in a title or more at the head of the document? Uh, is, is this not interesting? And, and so on. You can do an experiment with this and um, I don't know if this is the best ranking but it's an opportunity that you can play around and try if this is, this is good for you. Thanks. Uh, can I run multiple topical searches on on one instance? So, so maybe if if I want to build a search index for technical topics and one for I don't know I don't know photography, do I have to set up multiple instances or can I have one and then simply simply ask it just search in the photography category? Uh, uh, not now. We have an, uh, there's an option to, uh, to declare an, an uh, ontology of terms and to have a drill down on these terms which you can uh, detect in documents. So you have a drill down mechanisms on, uh, on ontologies. This is, this is very complicated. I can't, I can't show this now. We have a, an ontology generator for this. But um, to have different topics with different instances is a, a future approach. Uh, we will have this in fall. Okay, thanks. Okay, you said something about ontologies. So, uh, can Yassi uh, take an ontology and uh, say you search for uh, freedom and uh, can it search also for the terms the, uh, like associated with freedom? Yeah, in, in some way. Um, this, is, uh, this is very experimental. We are still working on this, but this is a topic we are caring about. So I can't say if... Uh, we, we need to discuss this more in detail, but um, yeah. it's I not ready. I can give you some help with this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. Thanks. I can, I can uh, get, uh, give you an address to a different talk where I explained this. So then, no more questions. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this was interesting for you. Please try this out. You would, maybe you would like to have these lights into your hands and uh, go to Twitter and search for Yassi and you get a tweet with a link to the PDF. Thank you very much. <laughs>